Okay, and when we're looking at it from the perspective of what Dr. Ben was teaching from, what he actually managed to do is have a profound impact on academia and how the uh, Eurocentric Egyptologies was bringing across the narrative of African history. That's right. He's our first Egyptologist writing in English. Okay. There were other people writing in French, like Sheikh Ante Diop, but the first one in English is him. And the impact that he had on black Egyptology has been absolutely massive. He's the first to write books. He's the first to organize study tours to Egypt. And he's the first to popularize all things Egyptian in terms of history, in terms of culture, in terms of religion, in terms of spirituality, and in terms of names. There was, there was, there was empires in Africa called Kush, Timbuktu, where every race came to get books. My success to you, even if you wish me the opposite, sooner or later we're all See who the We are here at the Al Kibulun Revivalist Movement Memorial for one of our great bubbers who has passed the Grand Master Teacher, Dr. Ben Yohanan. Here with us today we have one of our most eminent scholars and authors within the UK. May we introduce here at Got Kush TV the uh, esteemed Robin Walker, who has managed to give us five minutes of his time right here on Got Kush TV, where we will be uh, having a little word with him about his uh, best-selling book, which is now in its second edition, When We Ruled, and also as well, I've got another one here, we're talking about Blacks and Religion, Volume 1. He gave the keynote speech in the memorial for Dr. Ben Yokano, which has been streamed live around the world. I'd like to say welcome and good evening to you, Robin. Good evening. Thanks for joining us at short notice, and uh, really appreciate you giving time out to Got Kush TV, the number one uh, UK conscious platform. Uh, you gave a great keynote speech in which you uh, explained how much of an influence the uh, Grand Master Teacher, Dr. Ben Yokanan, had on your personal uh, growth and also your experience as a student researching and learning about black history. Would you like to just explain to some of the massive, maybe in this little interview we can do some of what you was explaining to us out there on the floor there. Yeah, Dr. Ben is very, very much a pioneer. And if it wasn't for him, a lot of people that do research into African history wouldn't have done it. Um, his books are very inspirational. Um, they're very combative. They're very confrontational. And the chances are anyone who reads his books will want to do research and he's been very important in laying out the, the research methodology. 
um, how to pull information out even when the source that you're using isn't being honest about African people and, and their history, how to pull the truth out. And uh, in that research methodology, you were explaining your keynote speech. It was very much a help to you in writing and authoring some of the books that you've managed to author, right? There are, absolutely. Um, one of the things that Dr. Ben talks about is using monuments to tell history. And he mentions that Africa has a monumental history in ancient Egypt, in ancient Sudan, and ancient Zimbabwe. I've gone further, and I've also shown that places like Kenya, Tanzania, all the way down as far as Mozambique, has also got monuments. Um, places in West Africa, like Mali and Nigeria, has also got monuments. So it's possible to write a monumental history that's even bigger than what Dr. Ben had in mind. And this book, When We Ruled, is part of that. Uh, that book, When We Ruled, as well, is very detailed in its uh, chronology. And one of the things that you were emphasizing in your keynote speech was how um, Dr. Ben's books brought order or chronological order to a lot of African information that predates biblical information. Could you expound on that a little more? Yeah, I mean, people that follow the Bible, um, if they are Christians, they will believe that the world began 4004 BC. If they are Jewish, they will believe the world began 3760 BC. But when we deal with ancient Egyptian history, the first pharaohs of ancient Egypt, according to the documentation, go back 5717 BC, which is uh, thousands of years earlier. And then when we look at um, prehistory, you know, we've got human remains being found going back 200,000 years. And then you've got pre-human remains going back between five and seven million years. And that puts the Bible chronology, whether you're following it from a Jewish or a Christian perspective, into a perspective. Okay, and when we're looking at it from the perspective of what Dr. Ben was teaching from, what he actually managed to do is have a profound impact on academia and how the uh, Eurocentric Egyptologies was bringing across the narrative of African history. That's right. He's our first Egyptologist writing in English. Okay. There are other people writing in French, like Sheikh Cantor Diop, but the first one in English is him. And the impact that he had on black Egyptology has been absolutely massive. He's the first to write books. He's the first to organize study tours to Egypt. And he's the first to popularize all things Egyptian in terms of history, in terms of culture, in terms of religion, in terms of spirituality, and in terms of names. And so the popularity of Egyptian culture amongst modern black peoples, most of that in the English language is due to him. And the influence that he had on, like I said, your um, writing career, yeah, it can, can't be understated, can it? Absolutely. Um, it's because of Dr. Ben why I became a researcher. And following him in his example, the, the most important thing is to produce your own books, publish your own things. And those of us that are doing it, we're following in, in his footsteps. Talking about producing books, I see you holding your second edition of When We Ruled. Uh, what else have you got planned for us come 2015 and beyond? More books, more books. Um, I intend to do a second volume on uh, Blacks and Religion. I've got a first... That's this book I'm holding in my hand here, right? It's called Blacks and Religion, What Did Africa Contribute to the Origin of Religion? The Equinox and the Real Story Behind Easter and Understanding the Book of the Dead. When I do the volume two, it's going to go more into Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and new religious movements. And in all of these cases, what did black people have to do with these things? Well, in saying that, when you're saying that, I mean, a lot of people are not comprehending sometimes, especially when we look at when we ruled and uh, we look at the work of uh, Dr. Ben Yocanan as well. Many of our religious-minded brothers and sisters who may be in Judaism as black Hebrews or maybe in Christianity as black Christians or within Islam as black Muslims, some of them are unaware of the influence of Africa on the three main monotheistic, I don't I even like to call them Western religions, I just say three main monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Uh, one of the great things I heard you said out there is that um, you're not here to offend anybody. What you're trying to do, really, is spark the mind to sort of draw them in, as you were saying. Could you kind of expand on that a little bit? Further? It's very, very much that. Yeah, you have to bring people in. 
then you can tell them the truth. Yeah? And then you can then sp uh, spark an interest where they might want to do some more reading of their own and to learn more themselves. Um, I began very, very much as a student, then researcher. And my thing is to encourage everybody, no matter what your religion is, you better know the origins of it. And the only way you can know the origins of it is to do some serious reading. And in doing some serious reading, as you said, it wasn't just the impact of the African mystery um, systems or the uh, ancient ways of Kemet, Uganda, Kenya, etc., etc., because you expanded. It's not just Egypt and the Nile Valley. One of the things you gave in your keynote talks was that you can link it to all areas of Africa in terms of the uh, African mysteries having an influence on European religions. You also emphasized as well that the Eastern religions, Buddhism, Hinduism, in fact all of these seem to have had some profound contact with the African mystery system and African scholars. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, if you look at some of the chapters in the Book of the Dead, um, there's uh, chapters 76 to 88 where when a soul comes alive, there's a belief system in the Book of the Dead that your soul comes alive at the beginning of the day. And then your, the soul is free, the dead person's soul is free to wander um, during the day and then rejoin the body at night. And you can see that's the opposite way around to Dracula. Yes. All right? yes. The other thing too is the soul can also become an animal can also become anything that the believer wants it to be, depending on the chapter. And this idea that you can come alive as an animal, you can see where later religions in the East have this reincarnation as animals. That's where the belief system comes from. Okay. So you can then relate it directly to chapters 76 to 88 of the Book of the Dead. And you've taken time out to make sure that you can uh, relay some of the uh, ancient um, Kemetic texts that have um, been recorded and you've married it up to European um, Bibles and no, no, I haven't done that, no, because it's not necessary. Once people read the original stuff, they can do the marrying up. I don't need to do the marrying up. They can do the marrying up. So once you understand then how the Book of the Dead works, it won't just be Robin Walker said blah blah blah, you'll be saying it. It won't be I said it, you'll be saying it. You will see those connections for yourself. I'm not said so. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, we look forward to your next book coming forth. Um, when is it looking to be published or when are you looking to publish it? Um, all I will say is watch this space. Watch this space, yeah. You heard it from uh, Robin Walker. Uh, when we ruled an authority on African history in the UK, here with your number one conscious platform. This is Got Kush TV, GK TV, here at the memorial for Dr. Ben Yocannon here in Brixton, South London. Keep it where you got it, GK TV, the number one conscious platform. We was with the esteemed Robin Walker. Thank you very much, sir. Big up, thank you. There was, there was, there was empires in Africa called Kush Timbuktu where every race came to get books With my success to you, even if you wish me the opposite Sooner or later we'll all see who the prophet is He's our first Egyptologist writing in English Okay There are other people writing in French like Sheikh Anta Diop But the first one in English is him and the impact that he had on black Egyptology has been absolutely massive. He's the first to write books, he's the first to organize study tours to Egypt, and he's the first to popularize all things Egyptian in terms of history, in terms of culture, in terms of religion, in terms of spirituality. <laughs> But we do say, meaning that we are not in rhythm, we're not in sequence with the time, or we're not coping well with the liberty and in terms of names. There was, there was, there was empires in Africa called Kush, Timbuktu, where every race came to get books. With my success to you, even if you wish me the opposite, sooner or later we'll all see who the prophet is. I ain't at my political party. How I see my sisters and aunties. Kevin, I'll keep along that stuff.
Okay, and when we're looking at it from the perspective of what Dr. Ben was teaching from, what he actually managed to do is have a profound impact on academia and how the uh, Eurocentric Egyptologies was bringing across the narrative of African history. That's right.